Good morning, this is Dr. John Bennett, broadcasting from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. We have the pleasure of having another uh, China Neurosurgery Grand Rounds with Yuha Hernandez Niemi. Uh, and I'll let uh, Yuha take it over. Great. Welcome, Yuha. It's all yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. So I will speak about middle cell proliferatory aneurysms. Surgery for middle cell proliferatory aneurysms. I speak something about the background first, and then, then uh, show several videos, operative videos. So, as you all know, I'm working nowadays in China, Chengzhou, and I'm Provincial People's Hospital. And my experience is coming from my former working places from Kuopio, Eastern Finland, and Helsinki, where I was 18 years chairman. So we have from both cities, we have a extremely good databases. So we know, have a, we know a lot of cerebral aneurysms. So there are 17, more than 17,000 patients with more than 22,000 aneurysms and because the middle cerebral artery aneurysm is the most common in Finland so there is a huge collection of middle cerebral artery aneurysms more than 7,000. So in the databases are also the historical series you can see that the in aneurysm surgery was begun in 1940s in Finland or one case was done in 1930s, but the main part was done by Professor Snellman and Björkesten, so more than 400 cases were done in 1950s, then a little bit increase in 1960s, and then by far more cases were coming in the coming years, so more than 12,000 patients were treated in this uh, 19, since 1970 to 2015. In Helsinki, more than 12,000. And in Kuopio, we had uh, more than 4,000 patients now in the database. So this together give the number of these cases. So to show how the annual surgery was in former times, this is from 1953 from Helsinki. There is a large close to giant middle cerebral artery aneurysm and tied down with silk ligature and then Oliver Kruna clip is put uh, on the silk ligature. This is, uh, there is a story of, about the flying aneurysm. I will tell it quickly. Here we see uh, Professor Pjörkesten and his successor, uh, Professor Troop assisting as a young uh, nurse, uh, uh, resident, assisting Professor Björkesten. So in one case, they had terrible bleeding. Hypotension was in, induced by, an, by the first Finnish neuroanesthetist, Mirja Tapura. And then they could, did you seal the rent? She was asking and then, Yes, perfect clip. And what happened when dealing with the big aneurysm, main part of the aneurysm was uh, uh, flying on the shoulder of the anesthetist. This is the story that was told to me when I was resident in Helsinki. And old stories also, it was called professor competence, if you could occlude middle cerebral artery without deficit. This was the old story, so uh, jokingly said. So of our databases, there are, uh, this is the Finnish material, more than 22,000 aneurysms. You see that the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are in Finland the most common. More than one third are middle cerebral artery aneurysms 
and then about the other ones i will speak in the coming uh, webinars so we concentrate now on the middle serpra artery aneurysms so this is this data is coming from uh, dr reza dastis publication and uh, professor jaco rinnes the phd from Kuopio, both studied middle serpra artery aneurysms so in the former series they were proximal we called m1 aneurysms 14 percent bifurcation aneurysms were by far most common and the distal ones are rare and then in 2013 or 14 dr ahmed el sarkavu from egypt he was my fellow he made a nice study on more than uh, 1,309 middle serpra aneurysms, and he made a new classification, El Sarkavu classification. You see that uh, in this classification, there are more M1 aneurysms than in the former classification, uh, so 31%, so decreasing the number of middle serpra with the serpra artery bifurcation aneurysms and the distal ones remained also very low very rare so this is dr el sarkavu from egypt this is ugro dure opponent and i was uh, the custos or chairman at that time uh, in this picture there is one 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 thing something is drawn wrong you see this is M1 aneurysm is here, and the artery, anterior temporal artery, is coming separate. But in in reality, it is different. So the anterior temporal artery is coming from the base of the aneurysm. This is one of the, the rare sites of aneurysm where the uh, branch is coming from the base of the aneurysms. The other ones are pica aneurysm, pericles artery aneurysm and then basilla superior cerebral artery aneurysm so once more the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are the most frequent site in finnish populations in these aneurysms there are many times multiple aneurysms and many times intracerebral hematomas and because of the heavy bleedings and intracerebral hematomas that is a big uh, number of deaths before hospital but also high management morbidity and mortality in the middle serp artery aneurysms there is complex cisterna and vascular anatomy and blood sub supplies the very large part of the cortex and especially eloquent areas and collateral circulation is very poor you remember the old story about the professor competence you can occlude middle cerebral artery without deficit this is very rare happening and one important thing is that middle cerebral artery aneurysms are superficial close to the surface so speaking about the surgery treatment microsurgery in middle cerebral artery aneurysms you have four different groups you have unruptured they are treated elective away then you have acute ruptured aneurysms emergency operation with large intracerebral hematomas and then advanced approaches within complex aneurysms which are large giant or fusiform so like always in surgery planning is important you have to assess the patient what is the patient's grade if there is intracerebral hematoma aneurysm size and with what which type of aneurysms ruptured unruptured i always look on the length of m1 when planning the surgery and then of course you have to take care of the calcifications the strength of the wall because if the wall is strong then it is more difficult 
to clip. And if there are calcification, it might be impossible to clip. And parent vessels are sometimes coming from the base of the sac. And uh, further about the positioning of the patients, I am used to elevate the head clearly above the cardiac level, rotate slightly, not too much. The most uh, usual error is to rotate too much, then the temporal lip is uh, covering the sylvian fissure and uh, tilt uh, somewhat, somewhat, somewhat laterally the head and extend the head. But the, this is always tailored depending on the aneurysm direction, size and uh, how to put the temporary clip. So this is a craniotomy I have been using since 80s, atera supraorbital craniotomy with minimal shaving and uh, very little incision in the temporal muscle, so resulting no or very little temporal muscle atrophy and never frontal branch injury. You will see in the videos how it is done. And last time I showed unedited video, 10 minutes. Uh, of the opening, also the door was opened in 10 minutes. And then dissection toward the aneurysms. Aneurysm, because the aneurysms are superficial, you don't need and you should not use long instruments because when you are working far away, then it is more difficult. I'm using Chevalier forcepsis and uh, as a a knife, a needle with tuberculin, syringe, water dissection, and open only around one inch the sylvia fissure to come to the middle cerebral middle cerebral artery aneurysm and use sharp dissection. Here are some drawings of the aneurysms which are directed towards sylvian fissure, you have to always to, to take careful look how the direction of the aneurysm is be classified with uh, Dr. Dusty in four different directions. This is the direction towards sylvian fissure. And many times because of the heavy bleeding, there is red, angry, swollen brain. You have to change it to slack brain. In Helsinki, there was extremely good neuroanesthesist, so the brain was usually slack, even there was a heavy bleeding and big hematoma. But uh, when you have big hematoma, you should uh, go for it, take it partially out, and then, you, uh, then the brain is relaxed. If not, then you go to laminar terminalis, open it, and uh, seldom I have been using ventriclostomy because I go under microscope to laminar terminalis and uh, get CSF out there, and then the brain will be slack and you can continue operation. Uh, many times, bilateral mirror aneurysms, they can be done in one, uh, one operation, like in this case, is a familiar unruptured aneurysms. In this case, you should, I would go from the left side because it is difficult to save this artery coming from the right side. I will speak in the future about the contralateral approach. So we go to the videos. Here, <clears throat> edited by Daniel Kocurev, he's a Russian working now in Israel. Right side, unruptured aneurysm. This is CT angio. Where is the aneurysm? You don't see anything. That kind of tiny aneurysm doesn't need any operation, 
but we know our patients. This is two, three millimeter. And also, you see that the lateral suprapsis approach is only is uh, limited to the sphenoid wing. And actually, Professor Lancina from Mayo Clinic was telling me after learning the approach from me that this uh, sphenoid wing is holding the temporal lobe back. So now we go through focused opening of the sylvian fissure to middle cerebral artery. Anorismen, of course, here the anatomy is clear because there is no bleeding. Carefully dissecting now towards the small aneurysm. Usually in that kind of small aneurysms and ruptured, you don't need temporary clips, but in ruptured ones, it's very important. Now we are coming to the small aneurysm, some venous bleeding there, and now we see the aneurysm. Take a look at the wall of the aneurysm. It is no wonder that also the small aneurysm rupture actually nearly half of the aneurysm in our databases, the ruptured ones are less than seven millimeters and seven millimeter and then there are many of them which are very small size like this one. So here a curved clip protects, protects the anterior temporal artery here and now we see ICG filling, <coughs> filling of the arteries, but not the aneurysm and I go it down. The aneurysm put some hemostat there. And then close the door like a teeth so that you with glue, they close the cilia fissure and these are post-operative controls here. I selected these videos from hundreds of videos. It's very difficult to find everything. I hope there is a good selection of these videos now. The next case is a ruptured one. You see the difference in anatomy after heavy subarachnoid bleeding edited by Jane Lau, Hong Kong research and fellow from there. This ruptured left MCA bifurcation aneurysm, extremely small here again, like I told you, also small aneurysm rupture. <coughs> so this is the left-sided other supraorbital approach. And again, the same way going, but here I go down to have space and open now the laminar terminals, like I told you, told you. And you see the flash of CSF coming and sucking CSF, and then the brain is getting slack, and this is extremely important to have a slack brain, not to put retractors like it was <clears throat> it was done in the beginning of the, at least in Helsinki surgery when I was assisting my seniors. Strong retractors on both frontal and temporal lobe, and this gave, gave uh, difficult contusions in both lobes, like was found in Dr. Riku Kivisai's papers and PAC. So now we go to, towards the aneurysm, again focused, and anatomy is no more clear. There's a lot of blood, <coughs> and we have to find this uh, small aneurysm flashing. Uh, I'm flashing myself to make me slower.
dissecting here, then putting temporary clip on the MCA and now going towards the aneurysm. Temporary clip is protecting aneurysm rupture. You see now the aneurysm is here, very, very small aneurysm. And now the first clip is going there, pilot clip. Like Dr. Drake said, temporary clips make the aneurysm surgery even pleasant one because you don't have acute rupture and now aneurysm clipped and coagulated down and then changing of the clip. Usually the first clip is to protect intraoperative rupture and then the final clip is the perfect clip at the base of the aneurysm. You see that the aneurysm was a little bit bleeding. I took the ble bleeding inside the sucker and suck the aneurysm inside the sucker and to have the clip uh, to take all the base of the aneurysm and then checking the arteries and then ICG angio. Of course the aneurysm doesn't feel because it has been mainly coagulated and it's very small. I go with more the aneurysm and then many times change the clip and then take the temporary clip out, cleaning the field, put papaverin on the field. Papaverin is releasing the manipulation spasm and again, like in the former case, seal the Sylvia Fisher, these are both of the pictures. We go to the next case. This is also a ruptured aneurysm, but now it is a fusiform aneurysm, not saccular aneurysm. Fusiform aneurysms are more rare and of course more difficult to treat than the saccular ones. These are preoperative images. And uh, again, it is rather difficult to see the small aneurysm. It looks like there is a fenestration, but it is the site of the aneurysm. This here is the right sided lateral supraopta approach. Minimal shaving. Here in China, they are taking even the beautiful female hair out regularly, and this is very difficult to change. I could change in my own patients, but not widespread until now. This is Kamiyama schizos. You see, I'm using very high magnification because these are very small schizos. They look like crocodile here. And now we dissect the MCA. You see a lot of blood. And I should have, of course, now temporary clip on M1 proximal to the aneurysm. Here it goes, golden color. The good, it is good to have temporary clips different color than the regular ones. It is not in every place so. And now we dissect. dissect. Here is the beer belly of the dissecting aneurysm. So I selected the L-shaped ring clip. The ring is leaving the M1, the uh, MCA free and let the clip slowly close. So take the beer belly of the dissecting aneurysm here.
trying to take as much of the aneurysm inside the, the clip and checking, checking. And uh, changing the clip position, opening it again. The danger is, of course, that you may occlude the MCA with your clips. Now taking the, the temporary clip out and checking the situation. I think there's a lot of the beer belly anorism is left. So we have to put one more clip here. Second. One more clip is put there, tandem clip, in tandem way. The clips look terribly big, but the magnification is very big also. I always push the magnification, highest one, it is around 14, 15 of the Pentron microscope. And this is checking with Doppler the flow. And uh, once more checking. And then putting regular cotton to induce scarring. You cannot take all the weak A's away because then you would occlude the MCA and then again closing the cilia fissure, and this is post-operative pictures. The patient recovered well, and the, you see here the ventricular catheter through lamina terminalis. I put it in severe bleeding, so you can release CSF and uh, measure the intracranial pressure. This is unruptured right middle cerebral artery. Anorism, and uh, Patient name is Kukliel, Maria Kukliel. This is a crowing aneurysm. So, Guida Kuklielmi sends the patient, his sister, to me to be operated on the inventor of the coils, endovascular, one of the great men in endovascular surgery. There are very few people in the world who can change the world. Serbinenko, Kuglielmi were the ones in endovascular surgery, Yasakil in microsurgery. Here are the high magnification opening, the Sylvia Fissa with needle and attached to tuberculin syrinx, injecting water to distend the Sylvia Fissa, Kamiyama schizos opening, the Sylvian Fischer and uh, through one inch opening the Sylvian Fischer will come to the anorism. Of course, tailoring your opening of the Sylvian Fischer so that you will come directly to the anorism. Like I told you, I always, I'm always looking at the length of M1, then you can estimate where you should go inside. If short, then more proximal. If long, then more distant. So this is one of the important things when you planning the anorysis. Now we see the anorysis. It looks that it has strong wall, but it was growing. So here we see the, here's soon coming the teeth, the growing part. It has very weak wall here. Now you see, now you see that this, this part would burst if rupture would occur. Now we are looking for the M1 coming from distally, so we will find below the aneurysm, we will find the M1 here, 
and here the small perforators. I push the temporary clip in place here, and then now you see that the aneurysm is soft, or more, by far more soft, and take a J-formed clip, remove the temporary clip, Now you see that the, there's one, one part of the aneurysm is, uh, remains outside of the clip. I push one more clip there and then take the dock here with small clip. And here is one, one corner also. So I put one more clip. Of course, in this special case, you are extremely careful. So, ICG was good. Doppler here checking the arteries, and the patient made very good recovery. I think Hugo Andrade is here. He was closing the patient one and speaking Italian, could communicate with the patient very well. Next case is is edited by Johan Choco, who was responsible for the 1001 videos, which you can find in the internet, all of these cases. This is how it looks after coiling, when you have recurrences, and they are many, when you push coils inside the MC aneurysms. I don't think the new tricks in endovascular treatment of MCA aneurysms hold very long time. In big countries, China, Latin America, India, the follow-up is very poor and totally different than in, for example, in Scandinavian countries and maybe in some European countries, but the here you see that the recurrence, after the recurrence, is very difficult to treat the aneurysm. So I, it looks simple. I push two clips, but what both M2s are closed because there is not much of the base of the aneurysm. We, bu we bubbles our uh, th those. Uh, we bubbles our series maybe around 80 patients, which were operated after coiling. And one wise thing was that you have to have enough base after recurrence, space for the clip. Here, it's a little bit scarce. So I had to open the aneurysm and reconstruct and then take coils out because some of the coils were also inside M2, so you cannot, and in M2, so you couldn't take them out. Now I'm, I'm trying to have optimal clipping, but it's difficult because the base is so scarce. See, now the M2 seem to fill. And this is DSA postoperative. We, we did also. So these are postoperative control. So we could manage, but it was close. It was close to fail. Edited <laughs> by Chiang Chiang, Chinese neurosurgeon, my fellow. This is unruptured large MCA neurosum bifurcation. Bifurcation. Left-sided, lateral supraarticular flow, focal anesthesia, and then lateral supraarticular approach, 
one bore hole here, and then two cuts, and then small bone flap is coming out. So very good hemostasis is important because when you are in the most critical place, then the blood may pour in your neck and disturb the field, <coughs> opening the cilia fissure. Of course, now anatomy is by far more clear than in ruptured cases. Now venous bleeding here. And the small ball like aneurysm is coming there. We have to dissect the proximal MCA, that's temporary clip now. I enlarge and giant aneurysm. I always take a ring clip learned from Dr. Drake because the ring clip is not slipping out, it's holding. And then you should close the opening in the ring clip with the straight clip. This, I'm changing the position of the clip many times. And there now a strong straight clip is coming and I take the temporary clip out. When you take the temporary clip out, you have to be very careful, don't take it ruptured cases very quickly out because if it is bleeding you may not be able to put it back here i have to dissect more the bifurcation sub dissection is trying to escape clipping So it takes, takes several clips are pushed on the strong aneurysm. I'm coagulating it down to reduce the size. And then several strong clips are there and all the time controlling the flow with Doppler and finally with ICG. still coagulating down. I think I should add one more clip there. Okay, it's going there. So there's a long, long row of the clips now. In one case, there was a giant aneurysm, very distally, so the, the handles of the clip remained under temporal temporal muscle and here post-operative controls. Next case. Ching Chian again edited. This is now ruptured large MCA aneurysm. So you see a lot of blood and we also now the hematoma which I was telling may in may make emergency surgery necessary. Lateral supra of the approach, two cuts, then taking the bone flap out, drilling the bone, and then opening the dura. And you will see now red angry, angry swollen brain opening again the silver fissure and now blood is coming and dissecting with water the silver fissure open the Kamiyama's kissers Good. 
in that kind of big anons, you should have always proximal control and uh, temporary clips because otherwise it's very difficult difficult to treat the aneurysm. I went over the aneurysm, put a temporary clip here, and now we are manipulating the aneurysm, put the temporary the pilot clip. So the aneurysm sac is here. Another sac is here, uh, but uh, it's not uh, optimally clipped. But uh, this is the beginning, beginning of the process of clipping. Checking the flow and tools. I think the clips are now too short. Doesn't look good. Uh, it's coming now, longer one. And then Checking again with Doppler. And the M2s are open, but here I think some part of the anorism remain, but maybe I certainly I didn't leave. It looks good, yeah. The next one. Ah, this is my favorite, but I, I don't show it because of lack of time. This was a 13 years old the girl, girl Nata, Natalie, had a temporal epilepsy and uh, had this calcified, mainly calcified giant aneurysm. I was looking at the base, that was, was free base, so I operated on her and uh, she made a very good recoveries now they studied chemistry and is working in a hospital in Lapland now. So I saw this picture because one of my Thai visitors, Christy Sandra, very skillful neurosurgeon, said that a young neurosurgeon has to prove everything. So how the results are and he showed always patients photo before and after operation. Then is uh, is by Johan Choco. Ah, this is a thrombose giant aneurysm. The <clears throat> idea was to operate all the aneurysms in one session to go from the giant one then to clip the ACAB aneurysm, you see here, an MRI, the giant aneurysm, and you see that it is, it is, there's a lot of thrombus inside the aneurysm. The partially thrombosed aneurysms are very dangerous because the thrombus may dislocate during manipulation, clipping of the aneurysm and go to M2s and also occlude them. So now dissecting the giant aneurysm and mandatory temporary clips are pushed here. I put here approximately two temporary clips to be totally sure that the circulation is stopped because you are using many times this clips so they may get weak. And now this is a moment you are, there's no coming back. I go with the knife inside and here I use kusa. I'm not using many times kusa, but kusa is very good to take the thrombus out. And here is special trick, vascular gland. The pequet gland is 
crushing the aneurysm and holding it closed after opening and taking the temporary tips out and checking now. And the vascular, you see now it's bleeding. Yeah. And I take ring clip. And because we have crushed the giant aneurysm, so there is a root for the clips below. It doesn't look good yet. We have to put the temporary clips again. And then the help of temporary clips, we can take the uh, thrombus more out. And uh, plan, compress the walls together and take strong clips and adapt the opened aneurysmus walls with the row of clips and uh, all the time checking the M2, the flow there, <coughs> and the ICG has been tremendous help of course, in intraoperative assessment. Now changing the tips. Once more checking. I think uh, the M2s were not open, so we have. I cannot go back in this because they are in PowerPoint, but uh, I think uh, M2s were not filling in the ICG. So we have to. Reconstruct again. And now I'm told to, these are the final clips. Important here is to leave some base because if you try to take from outside exactly the base of the anodes, and then you occlude the bifurcation totally, and both M tools are occluded. So, in large giant anodes, wise to leave some base, and it is <coughs> it is so strong the base. Usually, there is no possibility for it to rupture. Many times, changing the clips, and now carefully taking the temporary clips out, and now we have to make check again if the arteries are open and make ICG and now it is in contrast to the first one the M2s are filling and uh, then papa brain of the manipulated arteries and then closing carefully and then these are the post-operative controls and the patient recovered well. Because it was so difficult to do the giant aneurysm, I didn't go to the other aneurysm this time. So it is wise not to go forward in multiple aneurysms if you have difficulties with the first ones. First one, many times difficult to interrupt, but you should not go further. Then finally, this is a distal aneurysm. What is distal aneurysm? Distal MC aneurysm are extremely difficult to find. One K ruptured case, I had to open three times to find the aneurysm in the 80s to go to Angio, come back, and then again come back. So it is so difficult. Nowadays, with navigator, you can find the aneurysm well. Here, this case, I thought, okay, I will certainly find. You will see what happens. Opening distal sylvian fissure, filling it with water to distant. I'm lost low, low this vein here. So I had to coagulate the vein. This one, I, maybe I didn't lose, but uh, lose it. But uh, the bleeding, I had to cover it. It's feeling well here and here. 
So now, searching, 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 getting desperate. And of course, you have to be very, very careful when searching. So... Is the sound increasing or... The sound, increasing? I think we're having a problem with the sound there, Yuha. Is anyone else having a problem with the sound? Can you hear me oh, now? John, it's okay. Is it okay? It, it, yeah, it's, it's okay. okay I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Now you see what happens here. So I was looking long time, long time, at least many minutes in one place, and then I had to open the Sylvia Fisher other place, and then I find the others. So this is how the distal MC anons are extremely difficult to find in the archipelag of the distal Sylvian fissure. So when you find the distal MC anons, then you, it is easy to clip, but the finding may make you desperate. So proximal bifurcation aneurysms you will always find, but in these distal ones you have to check very carefully and if you can use navigation so it is wise to use it so yeah aneurysm this is the pilot clip yeah pilot clip is called the first clip because you are changing the position now i'm drawing the aneurysm inside the clip with a small forceps, I'm grasping the aneurysm and then uh, drawing so that uh, all the base is taken. And, and now changing the clip, take, taking curved clip down, and this is the final clip, taking all the base, base and the <coughs> arteries remain. Now again the small forceps. I draw the aneurysm inside and then let the clip close so the all the base is taken here. And add it. Seems that I added some clips. One more clip there. This is supposed to produce picture and you see the distal side of the aneurysm. So very difficult to find. So this is the conclusion of the distal MCA aneurysms. So concluding, middle cell artery aneurysms are superficial and should be clipped. This is my thinking and experience and remains so. Unfortunately, many stents are pushed in innocent middle cerebral artery, long segments, and many different coils are pushed inside, but they, these aneurysms recur in high frequency. So I thank you very much. Okay, you are, thank you very much. You cover a lot of territory. Here, let me get you off that screen share. Okay, I, I can bump you off there. Okay, very good. Okay, we're going to open the floor uh, to questions for you, huh? Is is Vlad, oh, Vlad here? Yeah. Hey, hey Vlad, yeah. welcome. Hello, Vlad. Hello. Hello, John. Hello. Hello, you uh, are. Hello. That was great. Uh, Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I would add one one thing that, uh, uh, especially in the large and giant ones, uh, you need the uh, bypass techniques in uh, middle cerebral. That's the best. I will. Report. I will speak about in future. Future of that. I was. I was thinking. Oh, you saved that. Of, I, I was selecting from many hundreds, uh, there were 600 videos of MCA aneurysm, so I was selecting these cases and then I was thinking that there are special cases, giant aneurysms where you are doing bypasses. Of course, if, if you are extremely skillful in bypasses, your, your threshold is low to do a bypass. But uh, like me, I learned very late to do bypasses, so my threshold to do bypass surgery is, is higher. So I, I never learned. I never learned very well bypass surgery, so I made direct surgery. Like Professor Sano is 
not doing any biopsies, but uh, I did biopsies more than 100, but, uh, but the I never became so good. So I was trusting more on uh, the I understand. in clipping, yeah. Okay. And the so, ne next uh, remark would be that in those large ones, the bottom of the aneurysm, the neck, actually is very, very strong. It's thick wall. And uh, I don't hesitate to leave a bit of the uh, base of the aneurysm behind. It never grows. Uh, and you spare all the perforators, uh, M2s. And uh, I feel safe leaving a piece of aneurysm behind in, in really large ones with thick wall. This is what I said. This is what I oh, said. Oh, you did. I it missed is, that. It is, it is uh, you have to leave some base otherwise you occlude the bifurcation so exactly. you have to leave so it is uh, if you are too perfect from outside then you kill the patient because the bifurcation is occluded so you have to be very careful and ICG has been and of course the micro are very 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 good in uh, yep. checking that uh, earlier we did uh, intraoperative, in, uh, intraoperative DSA with CR some selected cases. But, uh, Very good. This is to leave the base is extremely important. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, more comments, questions? Yeah, uh, John, this is Dr. Welcome. Ali. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, can much. you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, uh, this is Dr. Altra Fali. I, I work at uh, Aga Khan University Hospital, Karachi. I'm a neurosurgeon. And uh, Juha, it's, it's an, an, an splendid kind of uh, presentation you have been giving to us in the last couple of weeks. And we are thankful to Mr. Uh, John Bennett. He's also doing an extraordinary job by keeping us engaged in the, these days. Thanks. So my, my question is, how often do you get the proximal control in MCA aneurysm? Question A. Question B. As you mentioned just in your previous command that you leave some sort of uh, residual if it's at the bifurcation, then do you rape that with the with the some cotonoid or like uh, some piece so that to prevent the recurrence? In large aneurysms, the base is extremely strong, so it is no residual. Actually, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, if you are leaving some base in control angiogram, it looks perfect. From outside, it may look that you have left some base, but in control angiogram, there is nothing to be seen because the thick walls are pushed together, so the, all the aneurysm is occluded so and it is a big wise doom uh, to leave some base in large and giant aneurysms how long to leave the temporary clip in place so i'm fast certain i'm not asking to count the time i'm just trying to do the best possible job but usually it is if you have the temporary clip less than five minutes, then there are no difficulties or complications. And uh, even so, I think it is better to do the job well than to try to hurry very much. I, I'm always astounded with the, with the uh, when you have, uh, Bacillar thrombosis or MCA thrombosis, the patients have several hours artery occluded and then open and they recover well. So I think uh, these time limits, if you are, have a temporary clip in five minutes or 10 minutes, you should not get disturbed. Just do your job well. And uh, I try to cool down, remembering that many people run one mile in less than four minutes. So we have a lot of time to do the job. Right, my second question was, 
uh, in fact, this is third question. Do you go, do you open the Sylvan Fisher proximally and then proceed distally or you open it from distally to proximal? In I, MC I, I, I began already as very young neurosurgeon, actually immediately when I got the specialty. So I began to open distally to Sylvia Fisher because I didn't understand why they go down and then I come back. So I began to open distally and this is how I have done, done all my life of many years in two, maybe in more than 2000 MC annuals I have opened focused and distally. But of course, if you have very proximal annuals, you go down to have your temporary cliff, but the main part of the M M1s are more than 10 millimeters, millimeter, so you, it, you can go distally. So I, I thought you can see it. I open very one inch the Sylvian fissure. Of course, in the beginning you are opening more, but then you get used, and now the imaging is so good that you can focus your the approach to the aneurysm. I go directly around the aneurysm, not usually very proximally far away. But this might be wrong, but this is my experience. It might be wrong advice for very young, young neurosurgeon, but I think I have done it is already when I was very inexperienced. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the question. More comments or questions?